What's up? We're at Van Dusen uh, Gardens. Got a beautiful pond in the background. Looks like they got some pretty uh, large specimens here. We're just going to take a nice little stroll around, check it out. Um, big monkey puzzles. Check out big monkey puzzles in the back there. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. Tim's telling me in the back, he's got my cue card back there. Check those gigantic monkey puzzles out. I mean, this is an awesome pond with a bunch of, there's a bunch of ginkgos around. Uh, I see some conifers over that way. There's a little maple over there. So this garden is looking like it has a bunch of hidden treasures. We're going to go check them out. Guys, welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. I'm Matt. We had a great time going around Van Dusen. We were in Canada just having a ball. And uh, we want to take you around this garden a little bit. There were some fun sights and scenes. We really enjoyed checking out some of the different unique plants at the Van Dusen Botanical Garden. Hey, y'all. I'm Tim. Guys, like, subscribe, and share this video. It's got a, this place has a cool collection of plants. I mean, as we're walking up here on the right, you're seeing some amazing large monkey puzzles. Monkey puzzles take a long time to grow. I mean, these have had been here for quite a, quite a while. Yeah, you know, we're in uh, British Columbia here, right outside of Vancouver, and absolutely love monkey puzzles. They're a plant that's tricky because they like that cooler temperature, but they also like a little bit of heat. I mean, they're a tree that actually grows in the southern equator sometimes, so it's a fun plant. Uh, but really a unique conifer here. We've actually offered monkey puzzles a few times on Mr. Maple. And uh, yeah, I just absolutely adore that plant. And I like how unique these are too. Look at the different forms you see there just on these on the island. And I also like that they were on an island. Now we were going here in late fall. We're actually checking a lot of this out right before November. I mean, it was it was right at the end uh, of the, the month there in October. And some things already hit peak fall color. Some things hadn't quite changed, but a phenomenal garden. Now, as we travel around this path, they've got so many amazing plants. They've got a lot of cool maples. And just the setting of being next to a pond really adds a lot to the garden itself. This is our very first trip to Van Dusen. And for us, we went right to the gold. We went right to where the coolest collection of plants were on their maps. And it it's this is a pretty fun place to stop if you're in Canada. Another monkey puzzle here. I love the monkey puzzles. They call it a monkey puzzle because they say a monkey would stop under it and be puzzled about how to climb that tree. I liked this area. It was kind of fun. My kids would love these kind of tunnels. Uh, you know, in Canada, there's some different wildlife, so you never know what you're running into when you go through these tunnels. Yeah, it, th I love these tunnels, the way these rocks sort of came in. It sort of reminded me something of like Lord of the Rings. Like you're walking out these tunnels with this interesting plants just over top of you. It was an epic area for sure. There's a lot of different uh, settings to this, the Van Dusen as well. So there's kind of these different areas that have completely different landscapes to them. Uh, you know, it all has a lot of the native firs around, but then you get into certain areas and there's Japanese maples, you get into some areas where there were more water garden. Uh, it was very unique in, in the way it was laid out. And they did an interesting thing where they used some different uh, Pinus parva floras through here, but they used some shrubs to really accent and make those Pinus parva floras and other conifers focal points in the garden. Outstanding pass through here. Like the trails really are a big part of the garden. Uh, a lot of the stonework here is the stepping stones you kind of get through to get into different regions here. Uh, really well done how it's laid out. And it just kind of gives you a fun path to travel through. Now here we are getting into one of the Japanese maple collections. There's Sean up ahead. Uh, we're heading into a few of these different trees. Now some of these were labeled cultivars, some of them weren't. Uh, we kind of got in there and took a look around so we could see. The maples kind of made a big U-shape around the pond. So a lot of them went around one side of this pond and uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, it was a nice setting. I, I wish they were a little further along, but they really look nice. Here we see a large shishigashira right here on the right. Shishigashira is just a classic Japanese maple, and you really can't have a true garden unless you're planting shishigashira in the garden. I mean, it is such a phenomenal tree. It gives a unique texture out there. And they had such a fun assortment of Japanese maples in this collection as you walked around this garden. Really cool to see a shishigashira at this kind of age. And it's kind of interesting because 
like we saw when we were in Japan, where Japanese maples sort of arched out over the waterways, this what they were going for here. They had a lot of Japanese maples planted right along the edge of this pond. Yeah, they had good drainage. They're actually up on the hillside, but they're, you know, just kind of gracefully uh, mimicking the pond there. And what you get is a real nice reflective surface, too. So if you get to the other side often in fall color, you kind of get that reflection of all that fall color going on in the water. Now here on the bark, you'll see in a lot of these trees, there's a lot of moss and lichen growing on, on the bark. And that's just conditional in their environment. Certain environments will actually cause that to happen more frequently. A lot of people ask us if that's an issue or something wrong with the tree. And that's just a, basically what the environment you're growing in. It. Now, if you're overwatering, that can cause it in certain issues. So you do have to be careful with that. But this is a natural setting where there's a lot of humidity in the air. And that's very different from the overwatering. I've been told by Dr. Creech and other experts that that actually means you have really good quality air. So you'll see lichen form in places that have really good quality air as well, but that humidity is certainly a factor. But don't take it as something's wrong with your tree. If you see lichen on your tree, uh, it's just conditional. This was a large uh, Shigeratsu Sawa, also known as Reticulatum. It's one of the first Japanese maples from the 1700s list. Uh, classic Japanese maple with that white reticulation. Some different lace leaves here as we walk through on our left, and then you kind of hide under some of these big trees on the right as you make it through. Looks like another shishigashira here with some great size to it. I just loved how old these trunks were on these Japanese, on these shishigashira. Uh, very multi-trunked. A lot of people will try to take a Japanese maple and limb it up and have basically like a street tree form. And when you have these multi-trunks, you get a different aesthetic that's more of like traditional Japanese gardening. So this person really likes Shishigashira too. They've planted at least three here in this garden. That one might actually be the biggest there on the left. That's a huge one. I believe this area was a little bit more of the traditional woodland form. Uh, so you get into a little bit of the native habitat, um, some of the bigger firs that you see, a lot of the Douglas firs as you get in here. Yeah, you think of this as more of like your traditional Pacific Northwest habitat. And uh, it, it was an interesting garden because it sort of made you feel like you were just out there in the wilderness. And, you know, there's a lot of interesting things in this area. And the more we walked around, the more different things we saw. It was a fun trip to Canada, though. It's my first trip to Canada. Uh, I was real impressed, uh, you know, seeing so many great Japanese maples. And uh, we really just enjoyed getting into Canada. This was kind of as we were headed back. Uh, this was one of our last stops in Canada before we made it back into the U.S. And it was just a fun time. I, I was really impressed. I, it's an area I've got to get back to. I know there's several more gardens I'd like to get to in Canada. Here were a couple interesting totem poles that have been put in. Um, Pretty fun though. It was just fun pieces of art there in the garden. I've got that that moss growing on them as well. Just a fun aesthetic going on there. Something you don't often see in a traditional garden is a totem pole, but I like it. I mean, we're in the Pacific Northwest, so you know a lot of the indigenous people of this region certainly had totem poles, and so it was fun to see that incorporated into this garden, and uh, just super interesting. I, I liked seeing it. It was it was interesting. I liked the art. Well, I've hoped you all have enjoyed this video on Van Dusen. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.